This is 7 National News making headlines. UAE Foreign Minister receives Pakistani Minister of Foreign Affairs. GCC and Australia sign MOU on strategic dialogue. And North Japan issues a tsunami warning. In our top story, Foreign Minister His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Zayed Al Nahyan received Pakistani Minister of Foreign Affairs Hina Rabani Khar and discussed with her ways to develop bilateral relations in economic, investment and commercial fields. Sheikh Abdullah underlined the keenness of President His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nahyan to further strengthen relations with Pakistan in a bid to serve the interests of the two friendly peoples. He praised the progressive ties between the two countries. For her part, the Pakistani Minister of State for Foreign Affairs praised the UAE's wise policy and the achievements made in all walks of life, adding that Pakistan was pinning high hopes on its relations with the UAE. At the sidelines of the 118th GCC Ministerial Council session, the GCC foreign ministers held a meeting with their Australian counterpart, Kevin Rudd, in which the two sides signed a memorandum of understanding on enriching strategic dialogue. The GCC side was headed during the meeting by UAE Foreign Minister and Chair of the Council's current session, His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Zayed Al Nahyan. Also present was the GCC Secretary General, Abdul Rahman bin Hamad al -Atiyah. Sheikh Abdullah stressed the importance of strategic dialogue with Australia as a key country that maintains strong political and economic ties with the GCC countries. A joint statement was issued at the end of the meeting, which called for wisdom and self-restraint in dealing with the current developments in the region. Five contracts valued at over a million dirhams each were signed today by Diwa on the second day of the 13th Water, Energy and Environment Exhibition, or WETEX 2011. According to Diwa senior officials, the newly signed deals are in line with their efforts to support its infrastructure and boost efficiency grids to meet the growing demand. Khadija Sali has more. His Excellency Syed Mohammed Al Tire, Managing Director and CEO of Dewa, signed five new contracts on the second day of WITEX. He says these projects are in support of Dubai's strategy to provide reliable infrastructure that will enable Dewa to meet the rising demand for electricity and water. Most of the contracts are to reinforce the distribution and the transmission reliability. It will improve the reliability and it will enhance the uh, the, the system, the power system of Dubai. According to the companies, this partnership is one of the biggest in the last two years. As such, it is a positive sign for businesses and has further enhanced their confidence in Dubai. Water is the basic necessity for everyone, so um, and we have confidence on Dubai. You know that uh, things will move on very fast. It's a water reservoir of 120 million gallons per day, and uh, it's a, it's called Gafat, where we have to construct a reservoir which is uh, one of the biggest, which is cast in C2. And it is the value project value is 285 million uh, AD. Another contract signed will oversee the project that aims to improve the efficiency of gas turbines during the peak summer season. The total cost of the five new contracts signed is up to 1 billion dirhams. The massive electricity and water projects, according to authorities, will ensure the efficient delivery of supply to the growing demand while maintaining energy saving standards. Khadija Sali, 7 National News. Police have warned the public against using sirens in their cars in a bid to pass congested areas by misleading other drivers into thinking they were an emergency vehicle. According to local reports, Lieutenant Colonel Arif Bouchagar, director of Cassis Police Station, has said that sirens sold at car accessory shops posed a risk that could risk the lives of other road users. He stressed that police will be strict with anybody who jeopardizes people's lives and warned shop owners to discontinue selling the equipment or face legal action. 
The UAE and Lebanon topped a list of peoples who support equal access to education by boys and girls. According to a local newspaper, approximately 95% from almost all divisions within UAE society, which includes men and women in all age groups, the educated and uneducated, and urban and rural dwellers, believe that women should have access to education. That's according to Dalia Mogahed, director and senior analyst at the Abu Dhabi Gallup Center and the Gallup Center for Muslim Studies. Lebanon topped the list of 16 Arab countries with 96% of those surveys facing favoring equal access to education. Two people have been injured and 16 others were rescued after two wooden boats caught fire opposite Deera Creek on Tuesday evening. According to local reports, the Dubai Civil Defence received the fire report at 4pm. Two wooden boats, one carrying 15 cars and the other one carrying paints and diesel, caught fire. The fire was brought under control by about 5pm and clearing of the wreckage was continued today. A strong earthquake with a preliminary magnitude of 7.2 struck off the coast of northeast Japan today, triggering a region-wide tsunami alert. There were no immediate reports of damage or injuries as the tremors shook parts of northern Japan and even the capital Tokyo. The Japanese Meteorological Agency, in charge of monitoring earthquakes and tsunamis, immediately issued a tsunami advisory of up to 50 centimetres. Throughout many towns and ports in northern Japan, heavy anti-tsunami bunker doors were closed shut and residents were told to head for higher grounds. Earthquakes are common in Japan, one of the world's most seismically active areas. The country accounts for about 20% of the world's earthquakes of magnitude 6 or greater. Yellow rust, a wheat disease, destroyed about 60% of wheat plantations in northern India following bad weather in the region. Farmers are worried about the situation as most of them hail from very poor families and are not in a position to afford pesticides. They have further complained that they receive no help from the government. About 10,000 hectares of wheat are affected by yellow rust and farmers are facing huge losses. However, the district agricultural department says it is taking steps to control the situation. Officials have blamed heavy unseasonal rains for the disease. Four pre-Columbian mummies, two believed to be among the world's oldest, were returned to Chile on Tuesday by a private Swiss collector. Two of the mummies are from the Chinchoro culture in northern Chile and date back to 5000 BC, putting them among the world's oldest mummies. Foreign relations officials were along with archaeologists and historians gathered in Santiago to receive the mummies, which will eventually be put on display at an archaeological museum in the north. Chile's Deputy Foreign Minister Fernando Schmidt said the mummies were a treasure for the whole of the Americas. And up next, Linda Berenger has the day's business news, so stay with us.